Okay. How's everyone doing? Thank you for stopping on by. I think we're going to get started here on the second part of this uh, stream showing how to implement fighting game net code from scratch. How's everyone doing this evening? Um, morning if you happen to be out here in Japan. Still waking up myself. I'm gonna give people a few seconds here to drop on by. See if uh, any of you have any questions about last time. I'm just gonna show you some stuff that I did uh, since the other day. Hey, what's up, Mr. Ask? Um, but yeah, basically, saw some of what I did about implementing the game uh, simulation. I moved that out into its own function um, here so that we can separate this out. We can, in the future, it's going to be very useful for rollbacks. And let's drop that out into uh, its own function here. We can run that as many times as we want to, to update the game. Other things I did include basically abstracting the um, controls a little bit so that we could either control player one or player two. That's just done with this check here that basically sees if you're the host or client. The host always has uh, control player one. Your client has uh, always has control of player two. I'd also set up a uh, just a quick script to launch two game sessions. So we can easily compare uh, two games running over the network. I hope you can see it there. When I focus on the left side, it should be one of the players, and it looks like that's the client. And the red dot is going to be the, uh, the host. Looks like it's on the right side for you. So, yeah, right, left side is going to be host, right side is going to be the client, the blue one. Great. And now, so there's some debug hack so we can track the position of each player. It's pretty much what I did. I had some logging. Um, you're not seeing that yet. I'd love to add uh, the logging to the stream. It's going to have to be something I need to. It's going to have to do soon so that we can uh, actually debug some stuff in the future. But uh, yeah, for now, that's basically what I did. Okay. Let's see what it, our agenda needs to be for this time. Last time, we did. You know, uh, we got two players on screen. You know, each one's a circle. Uh, we had some game state that was done. Uh, we have simulation code for moving the player that was also done. And input polling was handled, right? And then we got some initial work done on networking. Uh, we we're able to start a, a server and have a client connect to it. But we haven't gotten to yet sending messages um, that include the player input. So this time I also want to write down briefly what I think we can do. I'm gonna, I was trying to think of the most naive implementation of network synchronization that I could uh, come up with. And that's basically just gonna be sending uh, input over the internet, over the network, on the fly, you know, just shooting it out as much as possible and then reading it over the network and immediately applying it to our, to our game simulation without any kind of rate limitation or anything like that. So that's gonna be the first attempt. So, um, First thing that we can do is testing sending our own messages over the network. So um, today what we're going to do is send uh, test sending messages over the network. And then we need to encode and decode play decode player input and apply it to our game simulation. Hopefully we'll at least get that far. I don't think it will take us very long to get there. And we'll see what the problems with that is, right? Why, why just doing that naively isn't going to maintain uh, synchronization of the game states. And after that, we can uh, fix the initial issue, initial issues with this naive implementation. And maybe we'll get around to like um, a frame limiter. So make sure our game won't update unless we have inputs from another player. And Hopefully I can get to um, simulating network latency. 
that's gonna be something that's gonna be very um, important. Okay. Cool. Well, uh, I think we can get started here. Um, hopefully, everybody who wants to watch this has already showed up, and if hopefully you've seen the previous stream. If not, it's on my YouTube channel. It should still be archived here on Twitch. I, I don't know how long that'll last, but yeah. Oh, can everybody hear me fine? Sorry. Let me move my mic closer, right? <laughs> Sorry about that. Great. Well, my mic was way over here, so I'm not sure. So here now? Okay, great. Sweet. Anyway, um, I kind of speak softly, so sometimes I need to have the mic close. Great. Yeah, sorry. The mic was a little far away. Cool. So let's look at our network code here. As we saw last time, um, we had a, an event loop here where we would handle basically a new connection and just print out a log message to show that we've been connected. But um, there was some stuff that we took from the example that was coming out here. I, didn't, I haven't handled disconnecting yet, but for now we won't worry about that. Um, let's handle sending and receiving messages. So I'm just gonna uncomment this code that they uh, had an example here uh, that involved that. I'm not quite sure what it, meant, what it means, but they have this handle message um, function. I'm gonna look at how they implemented that. Um, yeah, let's, let's go to that source code real quick. Let me open up the browser here, hopefully. OBS will behave and find that just fine or not. Let's see. It should be. There we go. Okay, we got it this time. Great. Okay, I'm just going to go back to the examples we're looking at on this echo byte example. So for the server, there should be handle message. Oh, yeah, so this is echo receive message. Let me go back to where we're at. Okay. Um, so we got client message receive. This shouldn't be, this should be in the host? Yeah, I guess this is fine. Okay. So we have this message received thing. Um, let's just handle that real quick. Let's just make our own function for this. So give me a second here. Oh, we already have it here actually. So th I've already taken for this from the example. Uh, okay, it looks like, let me close the browser here. Oops, and the VS code. So okay. We have our handle message. Uh, so this is getting called. Sorry, any issue, you guys? This um, on our tick network client, tick network host uh, function, which handles events for the server specifically, or for the host. Um, we have this client message received event and a call to handle message. This is taken from the example of uh, this networking library, but um, we can see what they're doing here. So my assumption here is I'm able to use this to, to um, receive and handle um, our input. So the goal here is basically we're going to encode the input in some form that we could package up and send over the internet. And we're going to use this function hopefully to read those packets of information and decode them back to, um, um, to input for our game simulation. But for now, I'm just going to look at this function and see how how it's handled. Um, yeah, this just checks to see if the sender is the client we've recorded ahead of time. Um, if it's the type we expect, then we read the message from the packet. Uh, we, here, they create another message. Um, create an outgoing message from the received data. And then they assert outgoing message. Okay. So it looks like they receive a message and send the message. Um, I wonder what they do with the message. Do they actually do anything with it here? Okay. Let's go look. It looks like the server on the server side they have a uh, echo function that basically takes. Sorry. 
I wish this would automatically focus. Yeah, it looks like on the example code they have uh, this echo receive message function. Uh, da, 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 da. They take the message from the packet that they got here. Um, they said echo, but looks like they just created an outgoing message and they send it. Okay. I think what we're going to do here is just try to send a message every frame just as a test and see if it comes out on the other side just by printing it to the log. Um, right now, you can't see the log, but uh, I'll, I'll show it to you guys soon. Okay. Um, yeah. So for now, let's just, let's just say send input message for now let's call it that this is just going to send it from the client to the host and we're just going to have the host um, read the message okay so I'm going to assume this is going to work we're going to create a outgoing message here using this function um, da -da -da -da. I know we're not going to use a reliable message I'm going to get back to this stuff but for now um, sorry Okay, let's look at this example real quick. There should be something in the client for sending a message. Sending a message. Send a message, okay. So we have this code. I'm just gonna use this example code real quick. And we're gonna drop into our game code here. Um, the first thing is we wanna try to send a message. Any questions, anything confusing about that? First of all, Anyway, we're just gonna have a test message. Um, uh, just test message. And uh, oops, let's make the const char. Yeah. Okay, that should be a test message. Um, we're gonna use that here, and we're going to create a packet or an outgoing packet. Make sure the packet is not null and uh, it's going to send it to the server and we're not going to use reliable I don't want to use the reliable message Wait, hold on real quick uh, I mean message is just kind of a generic term for information sorry we're talking about sending things of the network it's just another way to say packet right packet of information Usually libraries will call the, the information you're actually sending a message or something like that. But at the end of the day, it's going to be, uh, we're going to encode our inputs into a message, then we have to decode it back out. It won't be that difficult, but um, give me a second here. So let's jump into this function real quick. Let's see, it's not really... So unreliable and reliable uh, networking, this is kind of a thing actually. Um, unreliable means it, it's not guaranteed to arrive at the uh, um, other other client or other or at the host. There are reasons to do that. Um, they have to do with latency. But for now, let's use the unreliable message because I think we're going to be end up using that for the actual networking implementation um, yeah so we're gonna attempt to send send it if this fails we're just gonna exit the game again uh, like something like failed to send outgoing message okay because I don't think we need this anymore I, I updated my networking log stuff uh, okay so we we have this send input message thing going on okay and uh, let's just do it on the client side for now so before we do anything else let's just send oops send message sorry so send input message oops we could rename these functions here in a bit but for now I'm just going to uh, do this. 
I don't know if this should be before or after the add time thing, but for now, we're just going to go with it. And then we need to have a receive or handle message function. Okay. For now, it looks like we get it here. Um, and uh, we're not going to make an outgoing message like this does for now. Um, oops, hold on a second. Make sure this is okay. It's interesting. I'm looking at their code create byte array a message. Sorry. And it doesn't look to destroy this message information. Give me a second here. I'm kind of worried about this memory not being cleaned up. I wonder if this is a memory leak in their examples. But anyway, we'll get back to that. Oh, that actually does worry me. Give me a second here. I'm going to jump on the browser here. And they have this create byte array message function. Then they send the reliable message and they return. I don't know if it destroys that uh, thing. Okay. Create byte array. It's interesting, yeah. So the game server create by array message, they uh, destroy the message here. Oh, this is for the receive message, but they don't destroy the outgoing message. I wonder if that's just handled later, huh? That's interesting. Give me a second here. I'm kind of worried about this. Hmm. Give me a second. I'm actually going to delete this real quick. I don't, do, I don't do anything with that. Okay. They have byte array message destroy. Huh. You know, honestly, I don't know if we need. <laughs> there's no documentation on uh, what you do with this pointer it returns on this send on on this uh, create byte array message thing. I'm just a little, uh, a little concerned, but anyway, for now, uh, we'll just go with it. We'll, 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 we might check later to see if that memory is actually cleared up. I'm not sure. Could be actually issue in the library itself. So, mm. okay. So we have the handle message here. This is going to be used for the server for now. Um, so we're going to get the message, store it in a byte array. Um, now, what's in this, this structure, actually? Um, looks like we just have a bunch of plain bytes and a length. Okay, so let's change that message into a... Uh, we can just print it out. Um, well, we're going to naively just print it out, actually. You don't. This is not good for security. So, don't. Please don't. Please don't do this, <laughs> ever. But uh, for now, we're just gonna we're just gonna print it out. So uh, hold on real quick. Uh, I can use my net log. Okay. And um. Yeah, just never, never actually do what I'm doing here. <laughs> um, but we're just, as a test, we're gonna see what, what what we get. So cool. Um, that might work. Hold on. Make sure that. Yeah. Okay. Great. Awesome. So we need to handle the message on the server side. That's going to be on the tick network host. Okay. So we get the message received. We handle the message. I don't care about this part. 
we're just going to handle the message every time we get a uh, message from the client. Great. Let's see if this all builds and we can test it. Um, I actually might have to lower the amount of logging here so we can see what the see what's actually going on. Okay, it didn't crash. That's good. I see send packet. So we got a lot of verbose logging. Okay. Let's let's turn off the verbose logging here. You you can't really see it yet, but uh, it's there. Uh, do do do. So. Yeah, I'm going to change this real quick to uh, comment this out. Oh, I still have the browser open. Sorry, guys. Nobody said anything. I didn't notice. Um, yeah. Sweet. I'm just going to comment this out real quick. Cause the the verse post logging is not helping me very much. Um, so I think maybe this will be fine. See if that works. Makes it less verbose. Okay. Yeah. So we. So the message is coming him, in. Let me add this here for you. Add window capture. Oh, oh actually, we have that already. Hold on. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah. So you probably can see the console here. We're getting uh, the message received here um, with a bunch of junk at the end because there isn't a um, string delimiter. There isn't a token that says in the string. So good, we can send and receive a message. That's awesome. That works. Not too difficult, as you saw. But we need to actually encode our input, right? Okay, so what we need to do here is uh, send that. We need a function that encodes our our input, which we know is an integer, into a message that can be sent over the network. So let's make a new function here. We'll, we'll get back to this one. Um, this, this is send. Let's say call a send debug message. We'll you just use that for reference. Um, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna add. Um, Well, I'm just gonna start. I'm gonna call it a uh, input command or something, and then we're gonna take this and encode it. So instead of um, you know uh, putting outgoing message into a string, which ends up being read by this, we will. Take the byte, the integer itself, which should be a should be four bytes, perhaps. I don't know. I think this thirty-two bit application, so it should be four four bytes. Um, we could also just do size of input command, but we should be able to like encode the input there. Um, send it the way we did before. And then on the receive end, okay, we should be able to take it and read it back out into an integer. So, again, this is going to be a very naive implementation. So we're only going to be sending the player inputs directly and then re receiving them on the server and and applying them to our game simulation. So, you know, this being first steps, we're not going to we're not going to echo the message when you convert it back into an integer, right? So we need to, to we're just going to assume it's all going to be the input we we get uh, that was sent by the previous function. So um, this one will actually return an integer, right? Um, let's just do that. Or 
you know what, we need some state actually, and I'm, I'm going to get back to that. But for now, um, we're going to get the message. We need to convert it into an integer, right? Let's go back to this definition. We have a, a bytes and length, okay. So, again, naive implementation. Um, so, this has bytes in it, right? And we need to convert this into an integer, right? So, it's going to do a static cast here. Int. And what we need to do is, this is a pointer, right? This isn't the actual... Uh, information we need so we need to get the uh, we need to dereference the pointer we're just going to assume it's an integer that's stored there and it's encoded in the right bit order it may not be i don't know yet actually but hopefully the network library is good enough to convert things from network byte order it's another or yeah network byte order into um the host byte order uh, that's another thing i we don't really need to talk about here but if you know about it hopefully it just works crossing our fingers okay so the input command is gonna be equal to this right okay and just as a test I'm gonna net log it out so put received um, I'm gonna call this get input message from network um, yeah that's fine read input message is probably better um, and we're going to make it an integer and just output it out and uh, yeah input command hopefully this, this all works just fine okay um, so back in our host what we want to do is instead of calling handle message we're going to handle read input message and then on the client side where is it so on the client side, every every update, we're going to let's host again. Instead of send input message, we're going to oh, send me input. Okay, as a random task, we're going to send the number five. Whoops. So that should all be good there, and we'll see if we get five printing a bunch. Okay. And looks like we did. You don't see it here. Let me add. Yeah, you're getting the wrong output. But it's it's it is showing the. Uh, it is saying input received five. Okay. So, now we need to apply that input to the game so we can see the results on the screen. So I'm going to expose that uh, input message sending function. Or at least have some global variable we can access, you know, to, um, to read from and then send. Okay. So how should we handle this? Well, for me, the easiest thing is just to pass in the game, the input into our, our, our tick function. So for now, I'm just going to add a uh, tick network client. We're going to say input here, input command. And uh, we're going to add the perimeter to this. Oops. And back in our um, our main game loop, when we when we call tick client, where is that at? It's down here. Oops. Oh, here we go. Tick network client. We just need to get the input from the game state. So input for our cl client being player two. So we'll send player two's input. Oh, and then jumping back into, uh, sorry, the network code. Where is it? So, 
send input message. We're going to send instead of send five, we're going to send input command. Okay, just to test that to see if pressing inputs um, results in anything on our host. I need to build, don't I? Sorry. Okay. So input received. You probably guys can see that. I'm going to see if I have any controller. And you, I'm pressing buttons so you can see it has a result of showing um, this message on screen. Cool. So we're able to send our inputs and decode them clearly. So we seem to tie the input to our game simulation, right? That's easy enough. So what we can do is we can just, for now, as naively, we can just return the input from our uh, tick host function, right? So let's just return an integer. And uh, once we receive the input message, we need to, whoops, let's, let's change this to int, and then we return the input command. Okay, and back in our host. Uh, we're going to initialize the default input command. Uh, zero and then we're gonna go and then at the very end we can return it back into our main source file when we tick here so right now we have this default values for our, our input each frame I'm just gonna put this up here and then um, when we tick our host, we're gonna replace the input with this. This being AFK count as input. I'm not handling anything other than just the most naive case at the moment. Nothing to do with disconnects or anything like that. Okay, so we got the input from our our host update function that's going to be returned as we saw from our um, read input function and it's being stored in player 2's input state okay so that should let us see the avatar move around right so let's give that a shot unless I missed something So I'm going to move my avatar around on this side and it's not updating on this side. Why is that? What happened here? Well, you can see the input received is still it's printing out zero. What's happening? What did we mess up? <laughs> so what did we mess up here? Oh. We need to send the input after we poll, okay? That's not too hard. We, we just need to move this stuff down. So input polling happens here, and then we can replace our input with what we get over the network. Okay, let's try that again. And just update network. Okay. And then we should be able to, this should work now. Okay. That's our red, which is our host, that's fine. And then oh you don't see it yet. Give us a second. Then oh, we can see it. Blue. Oh well, you kinda can see it. Let me hide this window. Yeah, let me hide the console real quick. Okay. So you can see. When we uh, move blue, it moves on the other side. 
but the host obviously doesn't affect the client side yet. Cool, so that's like our initial netcode. We're done, right? <laughs> we can synchronize over the internet. Awesome. We're gonna call it a day, right? No, it's not quite good enough. We need to make sure we can send uh, input for both sides, so. Not too difficult. We can do the same thing for each function. So when we tick the host function, hold on real quick. When we tick the host function, we can send uh, our inputs there as well. Let's see. So let's open our network code here. So we're gonna we're gonna send and receive on both sides. So not in the last, sorry sorry sorry. We need to do. Um, basically do the same thing on both sides. So we need to have an integer here. We need to have uh, int host input command zero. And then we receive it over here using the same kind of event structure. I think there's probably a MBC host message received, uh, but uh, I'll fix that here in a second. Yeah, it's just in message received. So I think we can just call this function. It should just work. Read input message. Maybe it, it doesn't just work. Get info about the received message. Uh, get message info. Is that? Oh, yeah, there's two different ones, I think. There's game server get message info and game client get message info. That's kind of annoying to separate it like that. But anyway, we'll make it work. This means we have some code duplication. Not the end of the world. Okay. Anyway. Um, let's see. Go back to our network code. We need to make a read input message for our client. We need to change uh, this game server, game client to use that. Everything else should be the same. So we read input message on the client side here. Um, and we just do host input command here and then we return it. I prefer this to be shared code, but say la vie. Okay. So it looks like the client side, we now can send and receive, miss make sure that uh, our client is getting the input state for the host. We're gonna do the same thing, but for player one. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so we, we need to send, if for a client, we need to send our inputs and receive the host inputs, which is player zero side. And we need to do the same thing, but opposite for the host. So we're going to send our inputs when we're the host, that will be player one. Oh, sorry, I saw some comments in the chat I want to reply to. Oh yeah, if you just search for Raylib, you should be able to find it really easily. Um, honestly, let me show the browser here. Yeah, it's just raylib.com, easy enough. I'm using a slightly older version. They released 4.0 the other day, but I hadn't upgraded to it yet. I was already using 3.7, but yeah, there you go. Cool. Um, so let's go back to the tick network host thing. We need to input this correctly. So we need to pass in command, which is going to be our local input command. And we are going to send it. Oh yeah. We need to send, to send message. So we need, we also need a, now we need a host version. A server version of uh, of uh, the send message. So we're gonna do the same thing. 
Oops. Yeah, we actually can get rid of this stuff, I think. Yeah, we can get rid of this code. There. All right. I'm sure this is a game's server version of this function. I'm not entirely happy about the implementation of this, but we could easily abstract this away so we can share code if we need to in the future. Okay, so we need a stand input message at the start. I'm just going to do the very start of the host. So send input message, input command. Great. Now we have the client input command, which should come from the read read input message. Whoop, it should be, hold on, we made that special version for the host, right? Oh, oh, we already have that for the host, so that's great. For the client, we got the client version, and we're gonna return the host input. Okay, great. We should be basically good here. Let's see if it compiles, unless I missed something. Yeah, I'm using uh, MBNet. I can't really recommend it yet because we're just trying it for the first time. I'm trying it for the first time. Uh, so I don't have to do a lot of low level network programming. Um, but if it looks good to you, use it. The documentation seems very sparse, personally. Um, so maybe there's better choices. But because this was associated with Raylib, that's the reason I'm using it. But yeah. most networking libraries will have very similar uh, functions for handling, sending, and receiving message to the internet so I think this one's more game oriented too it's not just a generic um, network library okay everything built let's see if it works oh, oh okay whoops it looks like we got a crash somewhere what did I mess up Um, so we could just, what can we do? Let's see. So it's, it's either going to be in the tick network client. Or read input message client. So game client read input message. Let me see something here. I know why. I think this is it. Okay. I started is probably what's going on. Yeah, that was it. Oh, there wasn't it. Great. A board has been called. Yes. I want to see where the issue is. That didn't help me at all. <laughs> Uh, give me a second here. Where, what did I mess up? Okay. Let's let's comment this out and see if that was a cause. A little sleepy here, so I could easily have missed what I messed up. Oh, yep, crashed again. So that wasn't it. What was it? Maybe uh, it was sending the message on the host side. Let's give that a shot. Oh, it looks like sending the message was the issue. Well, I can see again. What do we mess up in send message? Oh. Yeah, this needs to be server, probably. Oh, whoa, okay.
Hold on. Is this what's the server version of this? Game server send an unreliable message. Okay. Oops. It's a little different, I guess. I need that we need a connection, so we need a client, I think. That should do it. Um Yeah, build is fine. Let's give it a shot. Okay. Oh no, they didn't do it. Woo. Um, give me a second here. Let's see what I did wrong. Server should be client outgoing message. Oh, hold on. Yeah, we got the game server sent a live message. Exit. What happened here? What what did we mess up? Hmm. Byte array message. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what I messed up here. Okay, what we're gonna have to do is just st start the game as a client. Um, I don't have to start this as a host. Um, hopefully, is this gonna crash? Uh, everything should be fine. Ah, uh, got it. Just hold on one second. Okay, we can't send, unless we have a client set, we can't run. So hold on real quick. I think that's the problem. We're sending, in, we're not connected yet. Okay, that's the problem. So, if client, sorry. This should do it, maybe. I think it's because we don't have a client yet. Oh, let me close this. Not yet. I'm gonna close. Oh, we still got this running. Okay, let's give it a shot. Oop. Okay, we're not crashing now. Looks like we're getting input on both sides. If I move blue dot, you can see the um, left side moves. And if I move the red dot, it moves. Cool, we're synchronized, we're done, right? We got both sides moving. That's awesome. I don't know, you can't really see which one I have focused, but uh, I'm, I'm going back and forth between the two windows. Woo, we made netcode, guys. That's it, we're done, right? <laughs> it wasn't too difficult. Before I get on to what the problems are, uh, let, let me show you. Whoa. Windows, what did you just do? Well, it, it just crashed, so that was fun. Okay, um, let me open that again. Okay. I don't know why the window delay is showing up. Oh, there we go. But actually, I don't know if you can see what the issues are. Look at the position on each side. What's going on there? In the top left corner, you can see the position of each um, actor or each uh, entity. Something off about the values? Well, they don't match. P2 matches on both sides, but the P1 doesn't match. What's going on there? 
<laughs> so, so we've we've desynchronized the states of the games, even though they started in the same place. They're not. They didn't end up in the same place. Yeah, that that's a desynchronization. Even without putting in any code that tests like packet loss or anything like that, we've we've desynchronized. There's a few different issues. We don't send input on the same frame on each side. We have no code for limiting the frame rate. Well, other than the game itself, nothing limits um, updating based on whether or not we have inputs yet. So we may receive, we're just receiving messages down the pipe and immediately just checking what the current value of our input is from that message, right? It, and it's constantly being replaced. So if somehow we get two messages by the time, you know, by the time we update, well, we're only going to get the latest input. So it's not going to match on both sides. If you watch my previous talks, you need to know that, you will know that in order to synchronize two games using this kind of a lockstep deterministic simulation, you need to actually apply the same input on the same frame. And we're not doing that here. We're just applying whatever input is available at the time when we do our latest game update. So the first thing we need to do is limit our game updates based on whether or not we have the input for that frame. That's our first correction. Oh, no problem, uh, SSB Reg. I glad you came by, and hope you can find time to to watch the archive. And hopefully, this explanation is clear enough that uh, you get something from it. Yeah, we're not gonna have rollbacks yet. We'll see. Once we get the rollbacks, we won't need to limit the frame updates in the same way, but we'll still need a, a limiter to prevent the game from getting too far ahead. Um, guys, I'll be right back around close to the hour mark here. So um, I'm, I'm going to maybe do 30 minutes more talking about limiting uh, the updates. But yeah, I'll be right back. So I'm back. Okay. Before we get started on more programming here, we just need to talk a little bit about what's going on. Okay. This code is closed. There we go. Um, let, me, let me cut the game out real quick. So we we t we tested sending messages over the um, internet, um, over the network. We can encode and decode player input and play actor game simulation. That works, but we need to fix what's going on here. You know the issue that's going on here. Again, as you saw, if you watched my uh, one-sided rollback talk, 
you need to be able to apply the same input on both sides, on both uh, game simulations to have the same results. Um, that's the important thing, which we're sending the input. But if you don't apply the inputs with the same timing, or more importantly, in the same order, then you won't get the same result. For example, like if you imp if you send uh, up and then down on the other side, you get down then up, and obviously the results after running those inputs in that order are going to be different on the, on either side. So we need to make sure order is preserved. Uh, we need to make sure that inputs are applied in the same frame, on the same frame, um, so with the same timing. So if you hold it down for two frames and uh, then hold left for the next three frames, it needs to be up the same on both sides. There can't be any gap where you're not reading inputs. You can't have one side that updates with a particular input and not the other. That's very important. So we need to limit our game updates until we guarantee to have the input from from one side or the other. So this becomes a tricky part of like how do we actually do this? Well, typically what we do is we keep a running count of how many frames have passed since the start of a game. And we send that count along with the input over the network. So that we can test to see whether or not our game has reached that many updates yet. And if we are before those number of updates, we can use that input. But if we're past that, it's too late, right? So what we'll do, the first naive fix for this is, again, we're going to record we're going to count the number of frames that have passed in the game updates, uh, associate that with an input, and wait for that to come over the network and apply it once we've reached that frame. Or we don't update, right? We just hold. Briefly talked about this in the uh, one sided rollback talk I did, but yeah, so we're going to basically pause until we get input that matches the frame we need. Okay, so going to jump back into our code here. The first thing I need to do to adapt this is add a frame count that we update for every game simulation, right? Okay, so we're going to start at zero, which is the most convenient number to start on. Okay, so I'm just going to back to the top where our game simulation is. Um, for convenience, I'm just going to put the game count in the simulation. We don't have to do this. It's not part of the simulation necessarily, but I just want to make sure our game states match. So we're just going to keep the count here. So we're just going to say frame count here. And it's going to make it zero by default. Okay. So, and then every time we update the game, we run a new simulation. Hold on. Where is it at? We need to update the uh, frame count. So game state dot frame count plus plus. Yep. And then the naive thing we do is we need to check to see if the frame we get from the network matches the one uh, we're about to update. So, firstly, let's uh, make a new variable somewhere at the top called latest network frame, or just network frame. This is the frame uh, count we get from the network. And then um, we're going to only just write this. Other player. Okay. And then what we want to do is get it from the network. So I'm going to refactor this a little bit. Where do we put that code? Uh, tick 
network. Okay. So instead of just receiving just the uh, inputs here. We're going to receive a package that has an input and the frame for that input. So we're just going to put that into a structure, a really simple structure. So we'll just make a new one here in our network code called strut network network mm, my network input package. Uh, not the best name, but I'll just name it this for now. Int input command and our frame or int frame count. Okay. And instead of returning int on these, we're going to return network input package. And then uh, we're just going to pass in the, uh, yeah, we can just send in network input package here as well. So input package. And we're going to have to obviously update these uh, definitions real quick. So better definition. Uh, okay. Give us one second here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna complain real quick. So we're gonna have to change the input message thing as well. So we're gonna get to this really quickly. Just for now, the definition. package and we're gonna have to do is instead of sending the input command we're gonna send input package okay and da -da 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 -da. and send input same thing on this side we need to have a input package sent to here okay oops again this is a very naive implementation I'll talk about the issues here in a bit We'll see what happens. If you want to, you can predict and put your predictions in the chat what's going to be the problem here with this, with this quick, naive implementation. Um, okay. Like what's going to happen to the game simulation, right? Okay. Uh, da -da -da. Read input message. So we also need to read the input message. So we need to have, sorry. What is it called? It's a network input package. Okay. Whoops. I don't want to be there. What happened there? Um, and we need to, instead of it returning input com command, we need input package. Uh, da -da -da -da. And uh, we can just put, we can change this to, sorry, I'm not converting it to the int. It needs to be input package. And uh, instead of, we can go like input um, frame. Okay, what's the issue here? Oh, frame count. There we go. Okay. And we need to copy this into the server version, right? What are they complaining about here? Oh, that's not int. It's in... There we go. Okay. So all should be good. What's the issue here? No suitable constructor existing vert. <laughs> Okay. Oh, I can't do that. Sorry. I need to copy. I'm an idiot. I, need, I do a mem copy. Okay. This is more generic. Um, sorry. Mem copy should be destination source. I always forget. Just give me a second here. We can't just do assignment. We have to do a mem copy. So it should be. I'm going to the Japanese version of this destination source and then count by count okay so the source is this destination is the address here input package uh, da -da -da. and the size is going to be size of uh, input pack 
package, right? Okay. I'm gonna have to do the other way around as well, I think. Give me a second here. Uh, da, 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 okay. We're just worrying about reading at the moment. I'm gonna look at sending here in a second. Okay. A lot of this is not network secure, by the way, so it's basic implementation stuff. Okay. Uh, da, 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 that should be good here. Everything here should be the same, other than this game client gave server. So again, this is why I don't like the. Yeah, hold on a second. I'm just gonna make this a shared function. So, got it. None of this stuff is server client dependent, right? Okay. So, first of all, let's just duplicate this function. Call it shared. Common. Uh, no, 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 no. Get rid of this thing. Okay. Okay, when you pass in this, sorry, as a, da, 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 as a reference and message info, we shouldn't get, we only get from here. Yeah, I'll have to do this for a few different functions probably. Then we're going to retrieve the message uh, da, 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 and destroy the message. Yeah, okay. Oh, the message comes from here, right? Write it. Okay. So this should be con constant. I'm going to make this const. This should be okay. And instead of doing all of this, we can do. Return message info. That should work. Okay. And it should be pretty much exactly the same for the server version. So let's move this up a little bit. Okay. It should be the same thing here other than this. Okay. So we don't have to. What is it, what is it complaining about? Oh, it needs to be network input package. Great. Cool. We just have the client version here and server version here. We the shared code here. Uh, no, no. So that's read message. What about sending messages? Uh, I'm going to get rid of this debug thing because we're not using that. And now, um, so we're just casting here and we get the size of the input package. So. Sending is already handled. It does the memory copy for us, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it creates memory byte array. So we're good there. So we got sending, receiving of the input package. What about tick? What do we do on our tick function? Um, we, well, we need to send th this actually. That's for the host and then sending on the client. Uh, we, we, need, we need to update this. Yeah, sorry. Do that on the client version. Do 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 do. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna fix this all up. Just give me a second here. We're gonna send input message with input package. Um, instead of host input command, we need to have a host input package. Host but package. Um, we're just going to initialize it to zero, zero. And then uh, we're going to um, get it from here and then return it here. Yep. We're going to do the same thing for the client. So we're going to need it. Well, this is the client. Yeah, we need we do it for the client side as well. So instead of having input command here, we need to do client input package. Sorry, it's a lot of boilerplate. Uh, no, no, no. We need to get the uh, package there, and then we need to return the package. Anything I missed? So we got sending, receiving, ticking. Um, and then on the um, I don't, what, I don't got anything here. On the uh, source side, we need to, instead of getting the inputs directly, we need to get the latest package.
All right, man. Mr. Ass, thank you for stopping by. Really appreciate it. Hopefully, I can do more of these kind of things. Um, it's about a little over an hour in. Hopefully, I can make it to an hour and a half, and then I'll be good on this. Because I want, again, these things take a long time, and I want people to understand it bit by bit and what all the problems are. Because things, you're not always predictable what the issues are going to be until you start getting your hands dirty. So. Okay, so the first thing we do when we tick, we need to pre prepare an input package. Okay, just, just makes things simple. I'm going to, in our input package, or sorry, our, our network package, what do we, what, what's the order of the things here? We've got input command and frame count. Okay, cool. So instead of sending inputs directly, we have, no, what was it called? I really need uh, prediction set up here, or suggestions. Okay. Network info package, right? Okay. So we have that, and then we need to send the current game frame as well. Game state dot frame count. We need to do that on both sides. We do that for player one or player sorry player two. And uh, we need to, so we need a new input package. Instead of getting this directly, we need to get, let's store our game package. So we need, uh, oops, yeah. Let's just set this to zero, zero. And actually I'm, I'm gonna make kind of a sentinel value here, negative one. If it's not zero, we don't get, we can't update the game, right? Cause we need at least the first input from the network before we update. This is going to lead to our first problem, and I'll, I'll talk about it here in a second. But yeah, okay. And uh, oops, sorry. Latest input package, and let's call it that. We're going to assign it to here on the you know on the server side, client side. We got the value, and one thing I want to do. It has some debug text to show us our current frame and the network current frame. So frame count and the net frame, net frame, whoops, net frame. Let's, let's see, I, whoops, yeah, that should be, well, whatever. I messed up here, but I'll get back to it. Okay, just to make them like kind of even so we can see what's going on here. And um, yeah, let's just. Make this white. Okay, and then we make this uh, our game state frame count. What did I mess up there? Oh. Let's be this, okay. And then it needs to be, oh, we need a position too. Give me a second here. Position and size. And then we need a, the network game talent. So let's input package. Let's get the frame count from that. And then uh, set position. We need to drop it down a little bit. So it's 40, 60. Let's just do 80 and then 100. Whoops. For the position, Y position there for the text. Okay. If we just run the game, what happens? Oh, we get error, so it's fine. Conversion from unsigned into int requires a narrowing conversion. Oh. Did I not make it? I made it int. Hold on a second. It needs to be unsigned int then. It is it is a bitwise. It is a um basically a bit filled. Okay. Okay, so we can see the frame count that's updating there. Net frame is set to negative one. Okay, and then let's just uh, run both sides real quick. 
see what happens. And we can see that the net frame is updating on both sides. Um, hopefully you can see that's what's going on here. It's not updating yet. Oh, there we go. Okay. So you can see both frame count and net frame is updating. And this is the actual frame we're getting over the network and it looks about right. The values are very close. It's no, it's no crazy stuff. And we're not applying the inputs yet, but we'll get there. Okay. The next thing we need to do is apply the input. Okay. So before we update the game simulation, when you apply the input, um, let's see. I'm going to do this a little bit like this. Um, actually, before we start, I'm going to add a new variable that indicates which side we our, our opponent is on. So, uh, da, 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 network state. Let's also um, int opponent side. Um, we're we're assume they're going to be at player one first, but then we'll fix it. And then opponent side when we are, sorry, when we initialize our network, I'll just set that up. Uh, no, 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 no. Okay, that's for F3 keys. Hold on real quick. Sorry, I'll have to do this. Equals one, and then on this side, it's going to be equal equals to zero. Um, same thing here for our manual setup. This should be common code, but... And now we can just go down here and then update our input. So let's say game state dot inputs opponent side equals latest input package dot input command, right? Okay, so that should work. We should be able to see our opponent's input updating and affecting the avatar that we see on screen. Okay. Again, you probably can see that it's working. Both sides are working now. You can't see the other window. It takes a long time to show an OBS. I'm not quite sure why. I can manually do it. Maybe. Eh. Uh, what are you gonna are you gonna show? <laughs> this time it's not gonna show. But anyway, okay, cool. We are updating still, so everything works at this point. But we haven't limited our updates right. So the most naive thing we can do basically is before we do any input updating, we can go if uh, latest input package dot frame count. So if the frame count we have is equal to the first thing let's just think about this first well you think like well we want their frame count for that input to be the same as ours right so we can go something like well if the frame count is equal to our game state dot frame count then we can just update right they'll just work right well actually here's the problem yeah we'll pull the input and send it right with that frame count. But the thing is, if we can't update this time, we're going to pull again for the same input or same frame and send that again. So we're sending multiple inputs potentially for the same frame because we're not updating. Our game will then get desynced. What, what we actually update our game with would, uh, um, might be different, right? You know, I send input over the network at frame zero that's maybe like up, but my game didn't update because I didn't get your your input yet. So, so I was waiting for it to come in. Once I finally get it, then I can update, right? Your first frame. I got your first frame, which is frame zero. I update, but at that point I had released the button, for example, so my input is no longer up. I'm applying a different input than I sent over the network. So you immediately get deep synchronization. So that doesn't work. So what can we do? 
Well, we can assume the first input is not set ever. So we have a set null frame that just counts as like the non-input frame. So what we do is we do one update and send that frame off, right? What we used for the input. So we always update the first frame, no matter what. This is the first solution here, right? So we don't always check the frame count in this way. We don't go, oh, we need the frame count, and then we can update. We all, we're always like one kind of one frame ahead in this, so, so to speak. So what happens? So basically, we would have to just not. The thing with that is, right? I can apply an input, send it to you, right? But you've already updated your game, so you're not applying the same input on the same frame. Which again, this is the whole thing to keep synchronized. So that doesn't work quite right. But we can delay our input to the next frame, right? We can say, oh, actually, we pulled on this frame, but we're not going to apply it this frame. We're going to say this is for frame two instead of frame one. So by the time you get the input from the network, you can apply it on your frame number two. And I can apply it on frame number two. So we're synchronized. Is that point, I hope that point makes sense why we need to do that? So one way we could do that in code is store off the input in a buffer, right? So we store it locally in a buffer, send it off with the frame count it's assigned for, right? So let's say we'll only have like a, a buffer of one. So we'll update our game. We want to apply our input now. We'll send that input we pulled, associate it with frame one. They'll get it. The next time they update, they're allowed to use the input they had recorded on frame zero, but using it on frame one, right? Finally, they can use it for the second frame of the game. I'm going to count. I'm gonna, I should say like first frame, second frame. That's much more understandable. So let me restart. So the whole strategy here is the first frame on either side, we don't. We, we, we send inputs, but we don't use them. Yeah. Uh, and then after that, once we receive the input from the other player, we can update for frame number two. And we use the frame, sorry, we use the input that we had recorded for frame number one during frame number one on frame number two instead of one. And we're synchronized, right? Because we're applying the input at the same time on frame number two. Okay. So let's create an input buffer. What's the easiest way to do that? Well, for now, instead of recording it off in our game state like we were doing before, the game state dot, you know, game state dot inputs, we're not going to record our input there directly. What we're going to do, you see how everything here is like this. What we're going to do is we're going to make a new variable that's input buffer. Okay. So let's put it up here network input buffer. For now, it's just going to be an unsigned integer. Um, so instead of assigning our inputs like you see here directly to our game state, We're just going to record it off in the, imp the net buffer. So, yeah, so for now, we're just going to do this. Oops. It's going to replace everything here with a net input buffer. We actually can get rid of this for now. Okay. Then, what engine are we working on? Uh, this is not an engine. We're just using Raylib, which is a generic game library to help us facil 
facilitate this, which this is kind of like a demonstration program showing how to implement Finding Game Net Code. Um, okay, so we got the network input buffer recorded, but we still need to apply this to game state with a one frame delay, right? So above here, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the last frame's input, then, then apply it. Again, this is kind of the initial naive implementation, so we're gonna fix some of the issues that pop up. So um, what we need to do is get game, you know, game state dot inputs. Um, we're using our our own side. So let's say if um, opponent is it opponent side. So if opponent side, we need to be the opposite of opponent side. So this is just going to be a quick way to do this. Um, okay. Okay. So let's. So now we have a uh, one frame input buffer, right? It's the, it's, this is going to add a delay, but you need at least a one frame delay when you're doing this kind of uh, network code. This is going to get fixed in rollbacks, by the way. You could remove this delay, but you, you need at least a one frame delay. I hope it's understandable why that's the case. When you're doing traditional, like, delay based net code. There's a reason why it's called delay based net code, right? But if you're just doing deterministic lockstep, where you're just waiting for your inputs from the uh, opponent before you update, you have to at least record one input before you update, right? And you have to you have to at least pull for one frame and then you can update. One thing we can do kinda is you don't have to do the first update so to speak. You could kind of just delay the first update. That will naturally add input. To, you know, that will naturally add. You know, that naturally add some um, time for the input to cross the network. That gets the math gets a little confusing, but for now we'll just let the game run one frame. Yeah, this is a tutorial basically. Uh, let's go. So. It'll we'll run up an hour and a half here. Hopefully, I want to get to this point. We're going to test this, see the issue, and I think we'll be done for the day. And we'll continue on for the next stream, probably next week. Okay, cool. So we have the one frame delay by doing this. I hope you can see how this works. We get the input buffer, and then we record into the input buffer. So the next time we loop around, we're going to record that one, right? Net buffer is initialized to zero, so our first game frame won't apply any input, basically. Okay, so let's just run it real quick, see if we have any issues that pop up immediately. Can I still move my, well, I can't move my my uh, player here. Oh, is it because I have this code? Wait, oh yeah, I don't need this code, sorry. Sorry about that. Okay, this is a test. Yeah, okay. Well, that's a problem, I don't know what happened there. I wanna make sure this works. Oh. That's funny. What did we mess up? So if the window is focused, we record the input buffer. Oh, if it's not focused, oh, sorry. Let's correct that. So if it's not focused, oh, we can just do this actually. We do need to record, we need to reset the input. So that should fix that issue. Yeah, cool. We have a one frame input delay here. Sweet. Um, and now we don't have our frame limiter yet, right? So if I just run the game, it's still gonna be kind of synchronized. It should just be synchronized. Well, let's test that. Synchronized-ish, let's just say it that way. So yeah, the blue dot moves around. It's synchronized-ish. Eventually we can get desynchronized here if we're not careful. Um, I don't have any packet loss necessarily, but if I maybe I click out and stuff, we'll see it. We'll see a desynchronization if I do this long enough. Why is the game not showing? 
Huh. Anyway. Still not understanding why it's not capturing. Okay. Is it? No, it's there. Okay. Where is the game client anyway? Where is this? I'll transform. Uh, is that the screen? No, that's not. See, it's not showing up. It's invisible. Not sure why it's invisible. What's capture is failing there. Okay, that's fine. We'll we'll just continue on. Okay, so we need to add the frame limiter now. Now. Now we're good. We're gonna send off the input for the first frame and update our first frame so we should stay synchronized, right? Um, so instead of us needing the first frame count to to um, to send input, what we have to do, sorry, here, I'm gonna give you a second, uh, hold on. So before we send input, what we need to do is we actually need to add one to the frame count because we have that account for that one frame buffer, right? So that we know when we get the input, that's going to be used for that frame. So when we limit our simulation, we're either either our frame count locally is zero because we're just we're just going to allow that Sentinel frame to run, or um, or frame count is equal to zero, or the frame count we need is equal to the game state frame count, All right? So let's think about this. We're going to send our frame count plus one, and we start at zero. We're going to be able to update, and the next frame around, we should be able to update because we will hopefully have by that time um, our input package from the opponent, and that value should be one, right? Because we had one to zero, it should be equal to our frame count, which will be one now, then we can update, and so on and so on and so on. Okay, um, make sure that's all right. Yeah, so to make all that all clear, I'm gonna remove the frame count. I'm gonna decouple a little bit from the update simulation here, just so we can see it in the loop. It's just gonna make it more clear, right? The frame count gets added, it gets incremented by one, so. That built just fine. Let's see if we stay synchronized now. Okay. Oh, do you see what happens? We're stuck. Frame count here is stuck to one, but the net frame is two. They got ahead somehow. So what's gonna what we're gonna have to do to fix this problem? Well, our good old friend the buffer comes along. We're gonna have the problem is we're only recording the latest input package from the the opponent. Say we get the first package was set to one, that's fine. We can update, but right after that we're gonna get numbered the second package, and if our timing's a little off, and we didn't we weren't able to update our first frame yet, we'll get that package. We'll get the first for the first frame and the second frame, N be unable to update. Uh, our sec well, let's just say the package for the second frame and, and the third frame. We're unable to update the second frame because we've got the third frame's package and that's stored off in that variable. So we need to like store this off somewhere in a list so we can pull down. We can see if we have the uh, package we need for that frame, the input we need for that frame. So that's going to be the first fix we do here. So we're going to have an input buffer from the network. I hope that's understandable why that is that's the case why we need to do that is so that we can continue to update you know if we don't have the right input for the frame we can't update otherwise we're going to desynchronize and we're only storing off one at a time okay um that's not gonna be too difficult we, we just need to make a a list of packages right 
I'm going to limit the number of of uh, inputs we store off for now. We'll get around to doing maybe better implementations. But for now, I'm going to go back up to the top. Where's our input package? If we have an input buffer here. We need a, uh, where's our input package at? Let's go to, okay. So we need to make, we need to make a per persistent buffer here, right? So I'm going to go up here and make a buffer before our loop, right? Let's do, Let's uh, let's you know, call it a buffer. Let's call it a history, the history of the last few received inputs, right? Let's let's just call it that. It makes more understandable. Okay. Um, so net input proponent. Uh, okay. Work input history, and let's just pick an arbitrary size for now. Okay. Um, let's say ten. Okay, I'll just define it real quick. Const uh, input history size count or count. It says set it to ten. Oh, we need to make that a int. Make that a ten, and then I do want to go to this definition real quick. I want to make a uh, decimal values for these so. Okay. Do, 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 do. Great. So we're gonna have to, what we're gonna do is we're going to record off. We're gonna record off the uh, input every time. Sorry, I'm fading a little bit. <laughs> we're gonna record off each frame, input frame. each network package into this buffer when we receive it. Um, give me a second here. I need, what else will we need? Oh, we need a, we need a current index into this thing. So, uh, put history index equals zero. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna increment that every time we receive a package, okay? So, what we're gonna have to do here is Uh, do, 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 input history. Um, what was it? What was the index here? Okay. So this is going to be equal to our latest input package, right? And then we're just going to increment the index every time we do that. I'm just running it this way to be a little easier to read. And then we need to make sure that the input history index doesn't get a value larger. It's going to loop around back to zero. So uh, what we're going to have to do is make sure that it's uh, at least it's going to loop around back to zero. This is just a mod modulus operator, modulo operator. So it's going to um, wrap it around back to zero. It takes the remainder of a division. So. And we actually can do this as one thing. So this is kind of like wraparound buffer code I use all the time. So if you haven't seen anything like this before, I'm sorry, <laughs> but uh, it's, it's, it's a pretty common way to do stuff. So this is going to let us wrap around that index. Okay. Um, so we're going to get the latest package here stored off in the buffer, and then we're going to increment the index. And now what we need to do, instead of just looking at the latest input package, we need to find, see if we have input from, from that uh, buffer. Um, this is gonna be really quick, naive search algorithm. We don't need to do anything crazy. Just loop through the full buffer and see if we have the input for that frame. If we don't, we can't update. Okay, so um, let's see, auto. 
no, 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 no. Input package, whatever you're gonna call it. Input package in uh, no, 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 in this network input buffer. Okay, we could we could write better algorithms, but this is this naive and quick. We're gonna find find input for the next game simulation frame. Okay, and uh, what we're gonna do is if the frame matches what we want, so yeah. So if input pack package dot frame count equals what we want here, then sorry. What we're gonna do here is break first of all. But what we need to do is have some value. So update next frame. Oh sorry, it's gonna be bull. And um, what we're going to do is or set this to true. And then we need to record off um, the, the what input we're going to use, right? OK. So we need to go da, 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 da. so to use input, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change this to use opponent. That's a lot of P's. Input command is going to equal zero first of all, and then I know it's a long variable name. I can change this in a bit. It's going to be equal to the input package dot put command, and then that's going to be. I'll make this const. Whoops. Let's make this const. So we're going to have the we're going to have the input if our frame count is matches the one we're going to ha update next, right? Cool. So. And we're going to take this and store it off here. And instead of doing this, we're going to check this variable to, you, to the update next frame. Okay. And one thing we can do is actually move this off here too. So, so either our frame count is equal to zero, and it's going to be false otherwise. And we're going to update next frame. I'll change this to B. This would be clearly a boolean. Um, cool. This, so this controls. This is our frame limiter code. Hope it's understandable. Okay. So if we just run the game now, it should just not let us update. Basically. Yeah, we're stuck at frame count number one, which makes sense. We're allowed to update the first frame, but we have no input for the network, so we're stuck. Great. So, hopefully I didn't miss anything. If you guys saw something I missed, let me know. So we're not updating still. What is going on? Well, it looks like we're receiving input from frame two on both sides. Did we never get frame number one? Let's debug, okay. I'm just like a look a little bit at this code. Okay, we got the list input package. We assigned it the input history index. So no matter what, right now we're updating our latest input. We only should do that if we actually get something from the network. So that's the first thing we need to do to correct to try to solve it. Um, I'm going to do about 10 more minutes here. I'm going to solve this problem and we're going to be done for the stream for the day. If anybody has any questions, please think uh, about anything. Feel free to ask um, and I'll, I'll try to get to them ASAP, but I gotta be right back, sorry.
Okay, I'm back. Give me a second here. Alrighty, so we need to add. Oh, what's up? Hey, Shinsu, what's up? Sorry about that. I had to stay out for a second. Okay, so we naively assume there's input coming every frame, which is not the case at all. So we, what we need to do is add a, uh, a flag indicating whether or not we received input. Okay. So I'm going to go back into our network code and add that as a Boolean perimeter, an out perimeter. We could just do it as a return value, but for now, I'm just going to assume it's going to be the out perimeter. So um, it's going to be B received, uh, received input. Okay, and we're going to do that on both, both, for both versions of the function. Um, oh, yeah, I, need, I really need my uh, VAX or visual assist. <laughs> okay, let's go back to the code here. Add it, add it to this function as well. Okay, and we're going to set this to true. We're first going to set it to false, and then it will be true once we receive input, right? So this is going to be true. It's going to be same for the other one, right? And this needs to be false, and uh, it will be true once we get a message. Okay. And then back at our code, when we call these functions, we need to pass in that perimeter. So be received network input equals false. Oops, that needs to be boolean, right? And then we're going to pass that out as a perimeter, an out perimeter, into our tick functions or network update functions. Uh, da, da, da. And only when we receive input will we we'll do this operation. Okay? So we're not going to update our buffer unless this is true. Okay, is that going to fix our problem, first of all? Let's see if it builds. Okay, the single client case. Hold on. Oh, we're still not receiving. Uh, okay. So in the single client case, we're good. Let me let me check the. Uh, let me check the uh, actual match session case. Okay. Still not good. Okay, we're still not updating. So what's going on? What 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 do we miss? Let me um attached to this session here. Um, hold on real quick. I need to find... That's a lot of instances of Chrome here. What the heck? It should be called clock sync, okay. Chrome, 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 chrome. Okay, okay, here we go. We're gonna attach to this process. I'm gonna step through here. Um, sorry, you can't see it. Um, but net state host. Okay. It says we received input. Interesting. Anyway. Oh, I know our problem. We're flooding our buffer with the same input. Okay, let me fix that here in a second. I don't know if anybody else could have predicted that, but we're receiving the same input for the same frame over and over and over again. So if we already have the f input, we shouldn't we shouldn't apply it, right? So we're going to do the same little search real quick before we do any of that. Okay. Again, naive. I would, I'll do this much cleaner in the future. But let's see. What I'm going to do here is just uh, if, if we have the input already, I'm not going to let us update it, which makes we're not going to increment and apply it. So we, we don't want to overwrite the buffer with the same input over over again. So um, we're going to do this. We're going to set this to false, so we don't actually overwrite the, the, the input we need. Okay, is that naively going to work? Okay, 
Let's give it a shot. Okay, we're still not synchronized. You can see the frame counts are not updating. What's going on? Let's, let's try the debugger again. Let's uh, attach the process. I'll jump into the... You can't see any of this. It doesn't pick up pop-up windows for some reason. I guess that's intentional. You don't want to show things you don't want to show, I guess, right? Okay. And then let's go to here. Okay. Let's go with the net input history. We're still filling this up with the same buffer. What happened? Give me a second here. Okay. Oh, 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 I think I have the problem. Give me a second here. Oops. Let me try this again. One more time. Still not updating. Give me a second here. Debug, attach, to process. Okay, we've got the host here, and I want to break here. Yeah, we're still filling up everything with two. Why is that going on? Oh, I'm an idiot. Pfft. Sorry. Ugh, I'm losing, losing it. Okay, it's not, it, shouldn't be, it can't be that, it has to be the latest package here. Okay, cool. Close all these windows. That's the problem. Man, I'm getting hungry out here. I got a lot of pizza from Costco I need to, I need to chow down on. That's going to be the first thing I'm doing when I'm done with the stream is eating pizza. It's, and it's going to be fantastic. I think we got the Supreme. Okay, still still not synchronizing. Let's look. At, this is what network programming is. <laughs> uh, let's see. Attach the process. What's going on here? Knocking down the issues one by one. Oh, I still have a third client running, I guess. I think. Yeah. Let's try that again. This should be, we should be good. So we, we see if the frame count is equal to any. We're going to look through all these. If any frame count is equal to this, we set this to false, so then we can't update that. Uh, update things from there. Da, da, da. Okay. Then we get to the hip library. All right, so this should be good. Let's try it again. Let's see what's going on. Still not synchronizing. Okay. Debug, attach the process. Okay, we got the host. What's going on here? Let's. So it says we received input. So we, we did not get input for frame number one in our history. You can't see this, but I'm looking at a pop-up here that sh shows it. I need to capture. Let's see if I can fix Visual Studio's capture because it doesn't seem to be picking up a lot of stuff. Multi-adapter capacity. I don't know what that does. Oh. Window capture method automatic. I don't know. Windows priority. Match the title otherwise. Window. Okay. I don't know. If anybody knows how to capture the uh, submenus, on OBS, let me know. I might have to capture the entire window, which, uh, entire screen, that, which that would suck. Oh, but these issues were working out. So it looks like we're not receiving input for frame number one. I wonder why that is. Let's just step through our program real quick. So what's well, the first thing we do? Well. We send input with network host. We, we set our frame count plus one. Um, we get to check through network input history. If the frame count is equal to what we received, then we don't we don't need to update it because we already we don't have it yet, and we don't care about frame number zero basically, right? Yeah. Um. So, 
first time around we don't care about this update frame is either going to be equal to if a frame count is zero which it is the first time around um, we're going to assume that use input command is zero for the first frame if we go through all the history if we have frame count equal to our game state then we use this input which is it's fine it's zero so we're actually going to loop through this the first time around um, but, 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 uh, yeah if we find it we are updating this it's going to be zero anyway because it's going to be zero to all the, by, by default update the first game frame then we update our frame count make sure that you can do that here sorry okay um, this is where you have to, you have to start using logging which is really important to see what's actually going on trying to use the debugger for every point it becomes really tedious okay so give me a second here I want to do sorry 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 I want to look for my I want to re reduce some logging real quick so Yeah, I'm going to turn off this logging because it's, it's really tedious. And then, uh, that log is set to, yeah. Okay. What do we need to do? Let's start logging and see what's going on. Okay. Alrighty. Um, let's see. Received at input, and let's just say D frame D. Okay, and let's do latest input package dot. What is it? Frame count, and uh, that should be good. What's going on here? What's the issue here? Oh, I need to put a type. Log for birds, birds, whatever. Okay. No, that's not right. Hold on. Oh, we don't have verbose. That's just log all. Okay, I should have made it a really simple thing. Anyway, we're just going to record which frame we received, and then we're going to say updating game. Same kind of thing. Game ticked. Yeah, I'm just gonna say our game or frame count here. So we we can see what we received and what we're ticking, right? Okay, let's give that a shot. See if that gives us any idea what's going on. Okay. Okay. I'm. You can't see the console still. I think. Not wanting to show you, or, or it is okay. I don't know which one you're looking at, but hold on. Yeah, you're looking at this one. So what's happening on this side? Let's little, let's make it a little bigger. Um, game ticked to zero. Received net input frame two. So that's interesting. On the other side, game ticked zero. Received input frame two. So how do we say input frame two? Well, we looped around, right? So we're not sending frame one. We're not receiving frame one. Why is that? What's going on with this? Okay. Are we sending frame one? I should check that first. That's important. Okay. Uh, I don't want to fill up the log too much. So what should I do here? Uh, what's going on? Oh, we need, we should check to see if we're connected. That's the thing. We should we shouldn't update our game until we're connected. That's important. That's something I overlooked here. Um, so 
How do we check to see if we're connected? Well, we have to look at the net state. So, update next frame. It's going to be either frame count equals does not equal um, network. Was it network state? None. Or is that it? Hold on. Not or and. It has to be not discon unconnected. Sorry. That's where network state stuff is. Yeah. And then we can only update if we get input, right? So this, this is logical. It makes sense. Well, actually, sorry. We don't even want to do this unless we're not connected. So. I'm going to change this entirely. I'm going to say b update next frame if this is equal to none, which means we're not connected. We we can't update. That's important. Sweet. Hopefully that makes sense and corrects the problem. Didn't correct the problem. It seems like game tick to zero, received input two. <sighs> game tick zero. So what what was going on? We shouldn't have ticked. We did tick. Or just or just not receiving the frame number one. That could be the issue. Well, let's have a let's just do a, a little strategy here, real quick. Um, Let's, let's send it multiple times, each input. So our, this, this is C5 for now. So maybe we're just not receiving the package. We're not receiving the, the packets. So let's just send it multiple times, right? My eyesight bad? Anyway, just in case we're dropping packets, let's do this multiple times. Oops. Sorry. Okay. Does that work? No. Undeclare. What? Oh, if. Yeah, my eyesight is bad. <laughs> to be four. We're running a little over time now, but uh, I just want to solve this real quick so everybody can kind of see what the issue is here. Oh, okay, so we got the frame count number three on on one of these. I don't know which client you're seeing. Hold on, let me hide the console for you. Okay, so you're seeing the uh, host. We got the frame number three, at least, so it means we got past the you know first frame we need an input on but the problem is saying the latest net frame is two so what happened we got game ticked one game ticked two we receive frame number one frame number two we never received frame number three well, or did we hold on I don't know which instance this is from <laughs> um, well, I'm looking at one side we received input on frame two, three, four. Other side we only received it one and two. So yeah, um, we didn't get frame number three, so we couldn't p update our frame number three. Um, on the other side, it never got past frame number one, so it never did frame number two, which means one ahead would have been three. So something happened on one side, or we got 
We got frame number, we got net frame one, two, three, and four, but we did not get one. Um, so sending out four packets did help in a way, um, but it's not good enough. There's some logical errors here we need to correct. One thing we need to do is we need to keep sending inputs for previous frames, not just the frame we're on, right? Because once we're past that frame we and all those packets got lost, the, the client may never get that frame ever, right? So one thing we can do is send a history of inputs, and that's probably going to solve the problem here. So we have overlapping inputs on each input. So instead of sending just frame one here, we send, oh, we send frame zero, well, let's, sorry. Instead of sending the, you know, the second frame, we send both the first frame and the second frame's input. And we can make it as wide as we want. So let's say uh, we want to send like five frames. So we're on frame number five, we send one, two, three, four, five, right? So we're gonna get overlapping inputs. And even if we don't get the packet for frame number, say two, but we need frame two's input, well, we have frame number five's history of all the inputs, right? So we can just pull two from that. And that's what we're going to do next time. Uh, we're not going to do it now. It's almost been an hour and a half or hour and a 40. Oh, okay. It's going to close hour 15 minutes ish. But anyway, I don't know if you have any questions about this. Uh, I would like to stream next week continuing this. Um, today is Thursday. I might do a little tomorrow too. But yeah, before I head out, does anybody have anything they want to bring up or mention? Or promote or sh is there anyone I should host to is that a thing uh, oh my friend King is is playing so I might host him if you're into like space stuff like herbal space program he's gonna he's on there I guess I'll I'll, I'll raid him yeah but anyway you guys uh good on anything questions yeah I'll put this on YouTube yeah. All right, guys. Well, thanks for dropping by. It was fun. Hopefully, we'll get more into uh, synchronization. Well, we'll continue the synchronization talk. All this is part of it, right? Making sure the game can keep updating is a big first step on uh, getting to rollbacks. You got to understand that part first, so... Well, again, thank you all for coming by. Uh, hope you come for the next one in the series. I hope you learned something. Uh, if you're confused, I'm sorry. You can always ask me stuff on Twitter. I'm definitely going to enjoy that pizza, Shinsua. But uh, hey, guys, uh, I'm sending you over to my friend King's stream. So, yeah, if you're into space stuff, enjoy. Guys, gals, everyone else, have a good night. Have a good morning, wherever you may be. Until next time. I've never used a raid command. Did it, did it work? <laughs>